Hello children, welcome to worship. The peace of the Lord be with you. When times are strange and things are unfamiliar, when times are difficult and full of adversity, it's normal to feel anxious, afraid and worried. It's important to try to show courage, to be brave and to encourage the people around you to be brave as well. Christians believe that in times of difficulty, they can pray to God for encouragement and strength. I'm going to read you a story today about a man called Paul who traveled around the Roman Empire, spreading the good word of Jesus. A lot of people didn't like what he was saying about Jesus and they accused him of things that weren't true. In the end, he was arrested. When a new Roman governor arrived in Caesarea, Paul's enemies in Jerusalem seized their opportunity. They sent messengers demanding that Paul be tried and punished in Jerusalem. They expected to see him crucified, just like Jesus had been. Festus, the new governor, summoned Paul are you prepared to stand trial before me in Jerusalem, he said. No, said Paul. How can I have a fair trial in Jerusalem when the charges against me are lies? I appeal to the judgment of Caesar in Rome. Caesar, said Festus. Paul nodded. Festus was astonished at his fearlessness. But he simply said, you have appealed to Caesar and to Caesar you shall go. Paul was determined to go to Rome. He had survived all sorts of things. Imprisonment, being beaten, being stoned. He'd survived shipwrecks and cold and hunger. Over many, many years. Now he was ready to face his final journey by land and by sea, and he knew that God was with him. Luke and other friends of Paul wanted to travel with him. A Roman centurion named Julius was put in charge of all the prisoners on the voyage, and so they set sail. The ship made its way up the coast and across to Cyprus. The wind was against them all the way. In Myra, they boarded a grain ship bound for Italy. Clouds rolled across the sky and powerful headwinds began to blow. By the time they reached a port on the southern shores of Crete, Paul, who was an experienced sailor, knew that they were all in great danger. He spoke to Julius, the Roman centurion, and to the commander of the ship, Friends, he said politely, this voyage is becoming too dangerous. If we carry on, we will not only lose our cargo, but many lives as well. Julius ignored Paul's advice, listening only to the captain of the ship and the ship's owner, who were both determined to reach the port of Phoenix further along the coast. As soon as they put to sea once more, a violent gale burst upon the ship from across the island. The boat was hurled up and down on mountainous waves. The sky darkened and no one could see the sun or stars for many days. Everyone, the ship's crew, the soldiers, the prisoners, all the passengers, everyone except Paul began to fear for their lives. In desperation, the crew threw the heaviest cargo overboard. Then they began to throw the ship's tackle away, but it made no difference. We'll all drown, they cried out, as the biting winds and driving rain beat down upon the little ship, threatening to break it into pieces. At last, Paul stood up again. Friends, he said, shouting above the wind. You didn't listen to me. You could have been saved from this terrible trouble. 
everyone was silent because they knew that Paul had been right all along. Keep courage, he said. No one is going to be harmed. An angel of God stood beside me last night and said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will certainly stand before Caesar in Rome. And everyone sailing with you will be safe. All the crew, the soldiers, the prisoners and passengers lifted, listened as Paul lifted his hands high. Courage, everyone, he said. God will do what he has promised, but we will be stranded on an island for some time. The fierce storms continued for days. The wind howled and threw the boat from side to side, but Paul said, stay calm. Everyone must take some food. We will reach dry land soon. The people ate hungrily to gain some strength, and at last land appeared through the mists and storms, a bay with a sandy beach. Suddenly the ship ran aground with a huge crash, and the vessel began to break up. The soldiers began to panic, and they were shouting. They wanted to stop the prisoners escaping. No, shouted Julius. Paul must be delivered safely to Rome. Don't harm any of the prisoners. So it was that, clutching driftwood, planks and pieces of wreckage, some floating, some swimming, every single person, 276 people in all, arrived on the beach safe and sound. Throughout that story, Paul had to show courage many times. But not just that. He also showed leadership and encouraged the people around him. He spoke to people to keep them calm. And he helped people to feel safe. In challenging times, children, I'd like you to try and show courage, try to be brave, but also, really importantly, try to help the people around you feel brave too. Encourage them, comfort them, console them, make them feel better. Before I go, I'm going to say our school prayer. Many of you know our school prayer off by heart, so you can say it along with me if you'd like to, and you can make the prayer your own by saying Amen at the end. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is our school. We offer it to you. Let peace dwell here. Let the rooms be full of contentment. Let love abide here. Love of one another, love of mankind, love of life itself, and love of you. Help us to remember that. As many hands built our school, so many hearts make our school. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Thank you for listening, children, and I hope that you are able to show courage and encourage others today. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Goodbye. <laughs>